Today we need to talk about the RTX 4050 mobile for laptops and if you're thinking of purchasing a laptop with this graphics card for gaming, you might find this video very helpful. If you're thinking about buying it for work-related and graphic design tasks, you can just jump right to the last dedicated section of this video. But before we begin, the vast majority of people watching my videos aren't subscribers yet, so well, you obviously know how it works. Okay, in general, NVIDIA's 50 series graphic cards have been quite successful, considering their popularity. According to the March 2023 Steam survey, the total percentage of NVIDIA 50 series GPUs amounts to around 15% amongst all graphic cards, which is almost 5% more than the combined total of all AMD GPUs. Despite their popularity, they are usually not very popular amongst gamers and hardware enthusiasts. I can understand why, as they are usually having a smaller VRAM, they are slower than the next higher 60 series, and the 60 series often offers better value in terms of the dollar per FPS ratio. Meaning that you would have to pay more dollars per FPS on a 50 series card. But for many people, the 50 series GPU is their first access to a real gaming PC and they tend to value it for that and make the best out of it. However, this year the RTX 4050 Mobile was released and for the first time since the GTX 900 series around 2014, the RTX 4050 is pretty close to its faster neighbor, the RTX 4060 Mobile. And that's a good thing, right? It's kind of common sense that faster hardware raises the price per FPS ratio instead of lowering it. Meaning you usually have to pay much more for only a little more in performance. At least it's usually been like that for CPUs and GPUs since I started PC gaming around 30 years ago. Additionally, Nvidia finally decided to support it with an extra 2GB of VRAM, so now it provides 6GB of VRAM instead of the 4GB it had for the 3000 series, the 1650 series and even the 1050 series, at least for the laptop models. Finally, our prayers have been answered, right? Well, yes and no. I've been testing quite a few RTX 4050 laptops in the last two months and my initial enthusiasm has dropped by a bit. When we compare the RTX 4050 Mobile's raw power to a desktop GPU, the famous GTX 1080 Ti or the RTX 20 Super are almost identical in performance and it achieves that with a lot less power. In fact, the RTX 4050 Mobile will not draw more than 75 to around 95 watt in games regardless of the version you're using. Even the 130 watt version behaves that way. In contrast, the GTX 1080 Ti was using up to 250 watt in gaming, which is three times as much. And that's great, right? It's the third of the energy usage for the same performance, so the efficiency is three times better. Especially today with all the energy crisis and climate change, that's a good thing. It's actually amazing and I love the efficiency. However, Nvidia chose to cut some corners in other aspects, again. As I've mentioned, the RTX 4050 Mobile finally comes with 6GB VRAM, where its predecessor only had 4, at least for the mobile GPUs, but um, the desktop version already had a whopping 8GB. And to be honest, with all my testing over the last two months, I have to admit that even 6GB VRAM isn't enough anymore in the newest games. Even the GTX 1060 from 6 years ago had 6GB VRAM already, which was absolutely fine back then. And the GTX 1080 Ti desktop, it had up the same performance like the RTX 4050 Mobile, as mentioned before, but it had 11GB of VRAM, which is almost double the size. So we are kind of getting a GTX 1080 Ti with only 6GB of VRAM. The issue with the 50 series GPUs is that they have the raw power to run games at resolutions and frame rates that actually would benefit from more VRAM. And the graphical settings too. This is especially true for the RTX 4050 and the RTX 3050 from two years ago, because both of them would have benefited from more VRAM, clearly. Furthermore, the 4050 can take advantage of DLSS 3.0 and frame generation to graphic options only available on the RTX 4000 series, and with these features activated, the card can even clearly outperform the GTX 1080 Ti in supported games. But using frame generation usually actually even increases the VRAM demand by a small amount. And unfortunately, VRAM cannot be downloaded or upgraded, so you're totally stuck with what you initially buy. While most games currently work with 6GB of VRAM, this will definitely change in the near future. For example, I recently tested The Last of Us on the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i with the RTX 4050. 
and the game crashed after just a few minutes of gameplay every time I tested it. Additionally, games like Hogwarts Legacy struggle with 6GB of VRAM even on medium and high settings or let alone ultra. And games like Forspoken recommend 12GB of VRAM even at full HD. Some may argue that it's the developer's responsibility to optimize their games better and I kind of agree, but with more console ports from the PS5, they are being forced to completely rework their code, which can often cause the high VRAM usage. Therefore, it's likely that soon you won't be able to play new games. Maybe not even at 1080p and low settings on this GPU, and I guess not a lot of gamers would want to lower the resolution to 720p on a new $1,500 laptop. And The Last of Us on low settings it just looks really bad. While most games and especially eSport titles or games like World of Warcraft, Forza Horizon and FIFA will run just fine, the majority of gamers don't know which games they'll be playing in the next few years. Spending so much money on a laptop that won't be able to run upcoming games properly is a risk you might not want to take. Nvidia is just once again cheaping out on VRAM and it's not just this GPU that's affected. And rumors have it that even the desktop 4050 will be reduced to 6GB as well, which is actually outrageous. And it would basically render the GPU dead on arrival, especially with Nvidia's price policy. However, I even tested some games at 1440p on the 4050 mobile, which is the next higher resolution after Full HD aka 1080p. I've made a dedicated video in which I compare both resolutions on that CPU, so if you're interested in that, you can watch it over here or in the description. I actually think that the RTX 4050 small memory bus is causing issues on higher resolutions. And nowadays many new laptops with the RTX 4050 already have 1440p as their native resolution for the screen, which I find to be completely unnecessary and actually counterproductive. Like for example in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you can clearly see here that at 4040p and ultra settings, the frame rate drastically drops even though the VRAM isn't displayed as full, which is not always 100% correct by the way. So what's happening is that the laptop needs to access the regular RAM as additional VRAM and the regular RAM of the um, laptop is way slower than the VRAM, forcing the FPS down to a number it can cope with. This will usually also cause muddy and blurry textures as G GPU doesn't manage to cope with reloading the textures, which is what happened in Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p, even on the high settings as you can see here. Without going into too many technical details about the small memory bus and bandwidth, the RTX 4050 does have its issues. When people ask me if they should buy an RTX 3060 mobile, 3070 mobile or 4050 laptop, I always say it depends on several factors, including which games they'll be playing, their budget, the cost of the laptops they have in mind in their country, and the decision is almost never easy. I mean, overall the RTX 4050 is a pretty strong GPU for a 50 series card, and it's about 30 to 50% faster than its predecessor, the RTX 3050, which is a big improvement. However, it's important to be aware that the card's VRAM may very soon be too small for new and upcoming titles, making it difficult or impossible to play them. Therefore, I cannot really recommend this GPU unless you're fully aware of its limitations and will likely only play games that don't require much VRAM. If you're looking to play the latest AAA games for the next 2-3 to three years, I must warn you not to get this GPU. Instead, try to get at least 8GB of VRAM or even more if possible. I mean, if your budget is tight, you should consider an AMD RX 6600M or 7600M or 7600S instead, as they come with 8GB of VRAM. Of course, these cards are weaker in ray tracing, but ray tracing on an entry-level GPU isn't the best idea anyways. And on the RTX 4050, it will instantly fill the VRAM beyond its size. And of course, the budget definitely is a topic for most people as well as all RTX 4050 laptops as of now are way too expensive considering the cost per FPS ratio. You would most certainly get better deals with last generation's RTX 3060 or even RTX 3070 laptops, which on the other hand don't have DLSS 3.0 and frame generation and they are usually paired with slightly slower processors. But if you're looking for a laptop that you mostly plan on using for work-related tasks, the RTX 4050 Mobile is most likely fine. 
The VRAM is definitely less important in Adobe apps like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, and the card will perform really pretty well in these apps. 4K video editing and big Photoshop composings are perfectly doable. You could even use the RTX 4050 for Blender, even though big and complex renderings might fail to finish the final render, especially when you're using optics as a render. But everything before the final render will be pretty fast, so working with Blender will be fast. And the card will perform just fine in other 3D apps as well. Okay, so that's all for today. I really hope the video did help you a bit in making a decision. Or maybe you're even more confused now. Well, let me know in the comments. And if you can't decide between two laptops, just post their names, their specs and price in the comments. And I'm pretty sure that either me or some of my subscribers will help you out with that question. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss. Thank you.